The Clyde Beatty Show. The world's greatest wild animal trainer, Clyde Beatty, with an exciting adventure from his brilliant career. The circus means thrills, excitement, snarling jungle beasts. The circus means fun for young folks and old. But under the big top, you see only a part of the story. The real drama comes behind the scenes where 500 people live as one family, where Clyde Beatty constantly risks death in the most dangerous act on earth. This master of the big cats has journeyed to Africa and India, hunting down his beasts in their native jungle. All of this is part of the Clyde Beatty story. Here, in Mr. Beatty's own words, is the adventure he calls The Devil Cats. The leopard is a ferocious, bloodthirsty, and cunning beast. The one delivered to my circus winter quarters in Florida was no exception. She had all those characteristics and more. From snarling jaws to incessantly twitching tail, she was inky black and over seven feet long. A jungle-bred killer, she was 400 pounds of clawing murder. My name for her was Nubia, but the natives in the Sumatran jungle she'd roamed called her by another. Translated, it was Devil Cat. Two days after she arrived, I learned this name suited her perfectly. The Devil Cat. We return to Clyde Beatty in just a moment. And now, back to Clyde Beatty's experiences with the Devil Cat. I guess every wild animal trainer has nightmares. I do. Mine's a recurring one, and it always begins with a spine-chilling cry. Get out! Get out! In my dream, I see defenseless men, women, and children attacked by jungle beasts. Get out! Get out! Mr. Beatty! Mr. Beatty, the big cat, the black one, he's broken up. This was no dream. I sprang out of bed and grabbed for some clothes. Get the men! Bring them to the cat barn! Right, Mr. Beatty. Clyde, what is it? What's happened? The cat escaped. The black one. Oh, no. Clyde, she's the killer. I know. Fifty cats in the place. Why does that one have to break out? Oh, here, let me help you with those boots. Why does it have to be the most ferocious animal in the quarters? Clyde, wait for your shirt. There isn't time. A few weeks ago, she was roaming the wilds. Now the devil cat's at liberty again and free to slaughter. Over here, Mr. Beatty. Over here. How did she break out? Well, she, she worked this bar loose. Bent this one. Slipped out. Yeah, that's one powerful cat. Uh, you said it, Mr. Beatty. What do we do now? How long has she been out, Buck? Not long. Them cats was all peaceful and quiet. I was just dozing off. Ruckus started. I run in to see. Black devil was gone. She's a murderess on the loose. I gotta get her before she kills somebody. Well, listen to them elephants. They're scared silly. They've smelled cats. She must be near the elephant enclosure. Let's go. Not me. I'm gonna get a gun. I raced for the elephant enclosure. The spaces between the animal cages were black and shivery. The beast whose ebony coat exactly matched the shadows could be in any of them. The elephants were trumpeting frantically. Suddenly, I found her. Or rather, she found me. I'd run past her in the dark. I whirled in my tracks. Now she was crouched in the path behind me. With haunches tucked, she was ready to spring. She carried no weapons, neither chair nor whip nor gun. There hadn't been time. With only my bare hands, I had to face the devil cat. Clyde! Are you all right? Harriet, stand back. The leopard's between us. Don't move. Clyde, look out! She missed. Are you hurt, Clyde? No, you distracted her. She just brushed my shoulder. Oh, thank goodness she kept on going. Here she goes. Out the enclosure. Now we're in for it. Yeah, we're in for it. And so is everybody for miles around who gets in her way. <laughs> I wasn't just being a hero when I dashed out into the darkness after the black leopard. That murderous cat was my responsibility. I had to stop her before she killed somebody. When I raced out of the enclosure, I called to my cage boy, Buck, to phone the sheriff's office and report the escape. 
Fortunately, the moon was shining full and bright, and they got outside in time to see the leopard spring over a low wall and lope off across the fields. Still unarmed, I went after her. The terrain was fairly level, but I found myself swishing through knee-high grass and crashing over a lot of underbrush. In a few minutes, I heard someone running after me. It was my wife, Harriet. She was lugging a rifle, a whip, and my jacket. I brought you these. But you might need them. Uh, thanks. When I catch up with that black devil, I will. Now, you run on back. When the sheriff's men get here, tell them which way I went. Hmm. Buck will tell them. I'm going with you. Huh. I shouldn't allow it, but you're a hundred-pound package of determination, and I know better than to argue. I'm glad you're more forceful with your pets in the lion cage. Come on. We better hurry if we want to keep on the trail of the black one. Hmm. Where do you suppose she'll go? I wish I knew. Can you still see her? No. The long grass is so heavy with dew, it stays bent down. The trail's clear. Do, do you think she knows we're after her? Probably. When she gets tired of it, she'll make a stand. You can bet she isn't frightened. <sighs> I wish I could bet I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. That makes two of us. Oh, the ground is getting more swampy. She must be headed for the Everglades. That's right. I'm glad she didn't head east toward with, the city. Oh, with all those people and the winter tourists. It would be horrible. She may still turn off. I'd rather have her double back to the animal barns. There's plenty there she might sink her teeth into, but at least the men know something about handling wild animals. I suppose it would be best if she continues west and disappears in the swamps. What? Lose a $4,000 pussycat? Clyde, you aren't thinking about the money. No, no. But I am thinking about those Indians living in the Everglades. The Seminoles. I'd forgotten. I don't think they'd like our black beauty running amuck through their villages. Look! There she is. On a hillock about a hundred yards away stood Nubia. She was silhouetted against a moonlit background. I dropped to one knee, cuddled the rifle butt against my cheek. I lowered the sights to left center of the black mass and squeezed off a shot. <laughs> Nubia stiffened. I knew I'd missed. Blame it on the moonlight, the lack of perspective, the unfamiliar weapon. We heard a savage snarl, and before I could line up another shot, the devil cat bounded away and disappeared into the dense growth of the Everglades. <laughs> Oh, Sheriff, uh, would you step into my office, please? Certainly, Mr. Beatty. You uh, say you saw the cat slip into the Everglades? That's right, and I think she'll stay there, at least for the present. Probably reminds her of the jungles of Sumatra. That's where she came from. Frankly, I don't quite know what to do. The city spread out over a large area. I don't see what defense we could set up. Yeah. And what about the Seminoles and the Everglades? They're in a pretty dangerous spot right now. We've got to warn them, but we can't do it tonight. In the morning, I'll get a boat, and we can chug around the Everglades at the different villages. I'll be ready at sunup, Sheriff. I only hope the devil cat will be satisfied with small game the rest of tonight. Sheriff. Well, we're all set to go. Morning, Mr. Beatty. Mrs. Beatty, you going along, ma'am? <laughs> Just try to make her stay. We didn't sleep last night, Sheriff. I pictured a hundred ways those poor Seminoles would be attacked. I wouldn't want to wait here and think of more. All right. Hop in the boat and we'll get going. I must say, Sheriff, the Seminoles in that first village were pretty calm about the alarm we sounded. Well, ma'am, the descendants of Osceola have had it kind of rugged for many, many years. Yeah, and this is just an added misery for them. That's about it, Beatty. Here's the next village. Let's pull in. Uh, looks like nothing's happened in this village. Seems no worse than normal. I'll call the villagers and give them the word. Hey, you over there! Call all your people together. Got 
just unbelievable. We're within a dozen miles of town, and yet we could be in the remotest regions of a dark continent. Yep. Oh, these villages remind me of some I've seen in the African interior or, or down along the Amazon. Oh, yes. It's uncanny. I keep thinking about those open, thatched huts of the Seminoles. Nubia would find them an invitation to kill. About that jungle cat, baby. Why have one in your show? <laughs> Quite a question. Well, call it the challenge, or if you wish, just showmanship. When instinctive enemies like the lion and the tiger, the elephant and the leopard are made to conform to a trainer's will, well... Careful, they... Clyde. You're giving away trade secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another village. There's something wrong with these Seminoles. Yeah. Look at them. Something must be wrong. Oh, I hope it isn't what I think. That Indian boy running like the Dickens. Looks like he's bursting with news. Well, young man, what's happened here? A terrible thing. A terrible thing. Come with me. Behind the clearing. Wakula will show you. Come on. Uh, looks like a slaughterhouse. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, I don't want to look at it. I don't blame you. Let's go back to the huts. All our dogs. Ten of them. Our cows. Our goats. Our sheep. All killed. That's a bad loss for your village. We are poor people. That was all we had. Well, don't worry. What'd you say your name was, son? Wakula. Wakula, you tell the villagers I'll see that they're repaid. Tell me, son, did any of you see the animal? No. But my brother Okala is a fine hunter, a trapper. He and a friend went after it. They'll kill that bobcat. Bobcat? A dozen bobcats couldn't have done that. Look, Wakula, your animals were slaughtered by a leopard, a huge black leopard, one of the most vicious beasts in the jungle. But how did it get here? Hey. Cat escaped from Mr. Beatty's zoo. But my brother, Okala, they went into the Everglades after it with just squirrel guns. Why, that's murder. Those boys may think they're trailing Nubia, but by now I'll wager she's trailing them. Clyde, what are you going to do? You stay here, Harriet. Don't let any of the villagers leave the clearing. Sheriff, do you know this country? Like a book. Hunted around here since I was a kid. Good. Get the guns out of the boat and pick up that roll of fish netting I saw on the bank. You and I are going after the biggest game you've ever hunted. The Devil Cat. We continue with the Devil Cat after this message. Back to Clyde Beatty and the Devil Cat. When a ferocious black leopard escaped from winter training quarters, Clyde Beatty pursued it into the tropical density of the Florida Everglades. Two Indian lads went after what they thought to be a bobcat. And now Clyde Beatty has set out on a desperate chase to save the young hunters from that murderously cunning man-killer, the Devil Cat. I was sure Ocala and his friend weren't a match for the black leopard. Glad to have the sheriff along as guide, we pushed off through the tangled growth of the Everglades. The marshy ground made the trail of the Indian lads easy for us to follow, and I knew it would be even simpler for the devil cat. Baby, look here. The trail goes off in two directions. Uh, I was afraid of that. What do you mean? Well, if the Indians had stayed together, it's possible the cat wouldn't attack them, but these signs indicate they've separated. That's bad, huh? Very. Ooh, what do we do? Uh, just a minute. Find something? Yeah. The trail to the right follows the leopard. The other Indian turned here and circled off to the left. They must have figured to get the cat between them, I guess. Right. For the small game they think they're after, that might be good strategy. But with a devil cat, it's suicide. Think you'll take them one at a time? That's it. <gasps> oh, which trail do we follow, baby? Well, there's no choice. We'll stick with the one who set out after the cat. Do you suppose they set a meeting place somewhere ahead? Possibly. What if they do hurt the big cat between them? They won't. She's too clever for that. Well, this is getting like a game of button, button, who's got the button. Come on, let's go. 
Lady, if that cat's so darn clever, the Indian boy doesn't have a chance. I know. Well, Carl had a good hour head start on us. If your devil cat wanted to kill him, wouldn't she have done it by now? I'm counting on what I know about leopards. Huh? What do you mean? Well, I've made it my business to study the animals I work with. Each species has its own peculiar characteristics. Oh. Besides slaughtering everything in sight... What's peculiar about your black leopard? Most leopards seem to take pleasure in stalking their prey. They've been known to follow a man for days, just for the fun they get out of it. Huh. Nothing like a good stalk before dinner, huh? Hmm. Something like that, Sheriff. Now, if this cat's consistent, and believe me, they aren't always, we may be able to catch her. Catch her? You mean shoot her, don't you? If necessary, yes. Oh, now, wait a minute. If you think I'll let that baby get within range and not plug her between the eyes, you're crazy. Let me warn you, Sheriff, if that happens, don't miss. Another peculiarity of leopards is that they're difficult to kill. And a wounded devil cat is something I hope you'll never have to face. For several hours, we followed Ocala's trail. The signs proved the Indian lad was completely unfamiliar with the nature of the animal he was tracking. He made every mistake possible. Fortunately for him, Nubia was running true to form. My hunch that the devil cat was stalking Ocala became a certainty when we reached a point where the trail appeared to end. Well, baby, looks like the end of the trail. No. Ocala used the roots of this banyan tree as a bridge over the water. Oh, yeah. I see the mud from his boots on the bar. And I see something else. Look down there at the water's edge. It's the footprint of your cat. Right, and it's fresh. Fresher than the trail we've been following. Then your hunch was right. The cat is trailing the Indian. Exactly. Well, what happens now? Do you know this part of the Everglades? Sure. What's on the other side of the water? Strangely enough, that's the only piece of high ground around here. There's actually solid earth and rock there instead of marsh and mud. I see. Over east, there's sort of a gorge cut by high water. When I was a kid, we used to run small game in there and corner them against the cliff. And mm, it's just the spot the devil cat had picked. Yeah. You think that cat's got the Indian lad trapped in there? I wouldn't be surprised. Listen. Rifle shot. That's it. Let's go. Easy now. We've got to approach cautiously. The lad will use up all his ammunition. Worse than that, if he nicks the cat with that squirrel gun, we can't hope to save him. If we move up to the left, he'll bring us out on top of the gorge on the high side. Good. That's where we want to be. More to the left. Quiet. Right. A little bit farther and we'll make it. Look. There across the gorge, the devil cat. Holy smoke. She's crouched down the edge of the gorge. Is she going to spring? No, she knows she's got him trapped. She's just toying with him. How'd the boy get on that ledge? You know, he must have jumped there in desperation. There's not much footage there. Now the ledge is too small for the leopard to land on. That's why she's waiting for the boy to move. But the boy jumped down into that gorge. He's a corner. Right. Ocala! Don't move. Stay right where you are. The boy's aiming at his rifle again. Ocala, don't fire. Press back against the cliff and you'll be all right. I wish I thought so. Look, I can't stand this. Let me take a shot at No. You. If your shot isn't clean, she's sure to drop on that boy. I'll aim for her head. If you don't hit the right spot, it won't stop her. Well, what's the right spot? Not clean through the heart. She's crouched belly down. That's impossible. That's the only target. From this angle, you'd never get a shot between her eyes. Can't we frighten her off? Not anymore. This is a showdown, and she's having too much fun. So? So we'll distract her. Hand me that fish netting. I'm going down into the gorge. But, but she'll leap on you. That's the idea. She'll leap all right, but if I'm lucky, it won't be on me. Man, you're crazy. Whatever you do, don't shoot. What? Beatty, you are crazy. I scrambled along the top of the cliff. The devil cat across the gorge watched every move I made, and I made some obvious ones for the purpose of drawing her attention. 
When I was sure her blazing eyes were fixed on me, I slid down the face of the cliff and moved quickly to a point directly beneath the ledge where the Indian boy stood. Glancing to either side of me, I made sure of the footing. It was no time to trip on a rock or a stick. Then I began to watch every single movement of my adversary, who by now was hissing and spitting her hatred for me. I saw her gather herself to spring. I paused a beat, only long enough to gauge the direction of her leap, then moved swiftly to one side. The cat landed on all fours at the exact spot I'd been standing. She raised herself half of her seven-foot length and struck savagely at me with bared, razor-sharp claws. It was then I cast the net. All right, Sheriff. Hop down here and bring a heavy stick with you. You, Okala, get down here, too. You've got her. She's all snarled up in the netting. Watch it. She gets one of those paws loose, she'll rip you to pieces. Will this limb do? It's perfect. Now run it through the netting. Uh-huh. Careful. Yeah. Good. Okala, get the other end. <clears throat> Yeah, that does it. Now, all together, twist. Now, my beauty, just keep flailing around like that. We can wait till you're tired. We've done it, baby. We've done it. We've captured the devil cat alive. Yes, we captured the black leopard alive. We netted her like a mackerel, but devil that she was, she fought us for hours. The more she thrashed around in a violent effort to free herself, the more enmeshed she became. When she was exhausted and hopelessly snarled in the netting, I sent Okala racing back to bring the men and equipment necessary to return her to confinement. When we got her back to winter quarters, I made certain the cage we put her in was strong and secure, escape-proof, even for the devil cat. a little frightened when you go in that arena with the animals, but that black cat... What about her? Oh, she's a devil, Clyde. You've been working with her for weeks, and she still terrifies me. Ah, She has to be broken, Harriet. Does she? What do you want me to do? Sell her to a zoo? Yes. Anything. Only don't go in there with her again. Sorry, Harriet. There's a bit of a feud going on between that cat and me. I wish you'd end it before she does. (laughs) It's become a matter of principle. A few more weeks and maybe she'll begin to learn who's boss. All right, Buck, let the cat in. Sure, right, Mr. Bader. School's ready. Here's your star pupil, Mr. Bader. <laughs> my gloves, ma'am, and my whip, please. All right, devil cat, get ready to recite your lesson. Back, Julia. Back, you black devil. Get back there. Back. Clyde will be right back with a preview of our next exciting story. But now, a message of interest to all of us. Our next Clyde Beatty show is called Crisis on the Set. It deals with the unexpected and almost tragic events which took place while Clyde was in Hollywood making a movie. Here is just a small portion of next week's adventure. Okay, Beatty, we're ready to shoot. You all set? All ready, Mr. Right. Sidney. Remember now, when that lion charges you and you run for the safety cage at the end of the scene, register an expression of fear. You're terrified, afraid you won't make it. <laughs> That'll be easy. I won't have to act for that shot. Okay. Quiet on the set. Quiet. This is a take. All right. Roll them. Speed. Action. The scene went as smoothly as a real circus performance for a while. Then came time for the shot the director wanted of Caesar charging me where I barely escaped into the safety cage. I motioned and he came down off his pedestal, his yellowish-green eyes flashing an ominous warning. Then he started his charge before I could cue him, before I was in position. Back, Caesar! Back! 
twice I blanked him as I scurried backwards to the door of the safety cage. But on he came, 600 pounds of murderous rage. My grip tightened on the chair in my left hand as my right hand groped behind for the cage door. Caesar was starting to spring. I should just have time. Then my heart leaped. The door was stuck. I couldn't budge it. Yes, take it from me, friends. Not all of the dangerous scenes in a movie are fake by any means. At least they weren't in the movie I worked in a few years ago, which is the background for our next story, Crisis on the Set. I'm sure you'll enjoy it, so we'll be looking for you then. This story was based on incidents in the life of Clyde Beatty and the Clyde Beatty Circus. The Clyde Beatty Show was produced by Shirley Thomas. The Devil Cat was written by Frank Hart Tausick. All names used were fictional, and any resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>